Uh, it was a Friday afternoon, I think it was about 4.30, uh, the day had finished. The boss said that the truck that I usually use had broken down again. A couple of days earlier that the alternator bracket had broken and we got it welded fixed. We both walked over and I sort of put my head underneath the, the hood of the truck and stuff like that and as I grabbed the, the belt to see if the bracket was still attached, he um, didn't realise that I was there and turned the key over and caught my finger between the pulley and the belt. We didn't realise straight away that anything happened, I sort of pulled my hand back and said you squashed my finger and then, um, yeah, then I looked down and realised that um, sort of half of it was gone. And within a split second, so many times that we've lifted the hood up and checked it and it seemed to be just one of those things, a Friday afternoon. But when it first happened, I lost to that part there. Yep. Um, the bone and all that was still there, but all the skin and tissue and that was gone. It had all been ripped off. I was taken to hospital um, and had surgery that night where they removed the first, or the end of your finger, the first knuckle. Um, and I think I was in a cast for nine weeks. Um, which then once we took that off, we found that there was another problem with the um, part of the bone that was still in there was broken and sharp. Um, so they had to go in and operate again and take that part out. And then over, yeah, the, the rest of the nine year period, I had four operations on my hand to cut the hand open to see what they could do. Um, they split the actual finger open three times all the way down and peeled it back to see if there was any tendon damage stuff like that which they couldn't find um, and then after I think four cortisone injections and the, the six operations or the final operation they took the, the finger off down right down at the base and that's what's left with now. It was three o'clock on a Friday afternoon and we had one lift to go before we were finished for the day. I couldn't quite reach the shackle I had to undo to finish the day off and we were worried about the traffic, getting out of Sydney at the end of the day. So I thought I'd just climb up the foot and grab it. There was a bit of water up there, I slipped, fell off. Only fell a foot, foot and a half, but I hit my hand on a bit of timber before I hit the ground. Um, the ramifications of that were I dislocated every single bone in my hand, I shattered my thumb, I destroyed my wrist, and I snapped every single tendon from my wrist to my elbow. I've lost count of how many, how many operations I had. It was a matter of for six years, every time I was strong enough, back in, more, more surgery, get strong enough, back in, more surgery. I was very lucky I had the best hand surgeon in the country, but still it took six years of operations before I was able to start strengthening my hand again. So I've now got two steel pins that go through my wrist that way, and a big steel plate that goes down my thumb and then wraps around my wrist with six screws in it. This bone here is made out of my hip, they had to go in through my leg and take bone out of my hip to rebuild that bone. And then my thumb actually just hangs off the end on the skin, it doesn't actually do anything. I think we're looking at it's now about 10, 14 years since I finished the operations and I'm still trying to get it up to strength. That one split second we were worried about the time and about getting away and beating the traffic. I didn't want to go and get a ladder or something because it was going to burn us a couple of more minutes. I thought I'll just go up and I'll jump up and I'll undo that and we'll be gone. It was just. For two minutes, it cost me six years, at least six years, for two minutes time. All I had to do was just get a step or get a ladder and yeah, every time you watch your mates run out and play football or you went and saw your mates play in a band, it came back to you every time. I was just uh, trimming up some, some timber on a table saw. Come down to the last um, little piece and I uh, fed that into the, to the table saw with a push stick. Just started feeding it through like I normally do and, and uh, my, my grip must have loosened up just slightly and, uh, and caught a couple of fingers, dragged them through and, and spat it out and, uh, and two fingers um, gone. Um, yep, yeah, just the, the main two. Um, yeah, just... Uh, just on right on the knuckle there. It was just one of those things, yeah, sort of, um, you know, not concentrating in the morning and, and bang, and off they come, yeah. It's just affected me, just the day-to-day -day things, um, like doing buttons up. Wide grip tools, 
definitely I struggle with them with that hand so maybe I might have to adjust with the other hand um, which sometimes isn't as strong you know or I'll have to use two hands instead of just using that right hand which was the dominant hand before um, so I've had to adjust and now my left is definitely um, compensated for my right so I use my left uh, a lot more it's definitely changed things yeah for sure just makes me makes me more aware that what could happen um, if you just stop thinking for for you know a split second so I sort of just uh, only have to think about that situation and, uh, and it sort of resets me back into sort of um, you know safety mode so I'm a pie fitter so when I'm doing um, in the cut the pipe where the blade is going along and to um, the, the, the swap in the building up. So um, I should have stopped the machine and uh, clean up the swap. But um, I just, same time, in the blade is working on and uh, in the take a swap off. But um, the swap is uh, take my gloves and uh, my finger my finger to the bone in the hit by stopper. I can remember the really, really to less than a second to hit the stopper. I should turn the machine off and clean the swap off. The stopper hit the, is on my bone here and it's all squashed the bone or squashed in the, break the bone and squash the finger. It's a hit just here in the center. So this bone inside here is it, broken and the finger was uh, squashed. I, 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 could, I couldn't get pain because I was shocked. <laughs> there was a Ruby Joe, so I went to the Dolby Hospital. Uh, Dolby Hospital is uh, not enough to the operation and all that. They organized with um, St. Vincent Hospital in Toowoomba. So straight through to operation in the same day in the afternoon. Still pain inside and the uh, three rings in holding on holding on to the broken bones it's not gonna straight anymore just ignore the rules i did it shouldn't take any shortcut to the proper way to do a work colleague hit my finger with a hammer a four pound hammer flat out yes i uh, didn't, didn't hold back it wasn't actually his fault it was no positive communication, I'd imagine. The nanosecond after it happened, I didn't feel any pain. I remember that. I remember immediately pulling my hand back and stepping back two paces, and it didn't register. The pain didn't register. And I knew that there was something wrong, and I had my gloves on. And when I pulled the glove off, then the blood started to come out, and then I think that's when the pain kicked in. What should you have done differently, or what should both of you have done differently? Probably spoken about the job in length before we actually started it. Although it seemed like a very straightforward thing that I'd done a, a lot of, a lot of in my um, construction career, it seemed like a very simple thing to do. I think you need to be—it's positive communication with your work colleague, and you've got to get to know them. It's just that one split second where you change something, and you could have thought, well, maybe if we did it a different way, or. Sometimes you think to yourself, oh well, I've hurt myself, I'll be, I'll be right in a week or, or two weeks or whatever. Um, but like I said, mine took nine years. I had six operations um, and that was just on a finger. I was playing in bands at the time. I was playing first grade football. I used to play indoor cricket. If all these things disappeared overnight, I couldn't play them again. We put a halt on a fair bit. Um, I used to go to the gym a bit um, and motorbike riding and stuff like that, which sort of come to a halt completely. In an instant, so it's imagine, it's, you can't imagine how your life changes in an instant, and that's, that's just the way it happens. When I'm thinking like a bad dream, okay, but it's a, how can it happen? I keep thinking, but I can't remember how it happened. With my job, we were doing probably 14 hours a day, six days a week, um, so the impact on the, on the money side of it was pretty big. I believe my son was about four year old at the time, couldn't pick him up. I couldn't, couldn't rough around, mess around with him. I had to be careful all the time. It really, really stopped me from doing a lot of things that I used to do. Think of the impact later on, down the track. Um, you know, I lost my left ring finger. I can't wear a wedding ring. Just keep, keep your mind on the job and just sort of keep focused on 
on uh, even just the smallest tasks because um, they can have sort of serious consequences, you know. Just message is just follow the rules, don't take a shortcut. The big thing is communication. You've got to, you've got to be able to talk to each other um, and, and make sure that he knows what you're doing and you know what, what they're doing and, and actually plan what you're doing. If it takes five minutes to do it safe, Five minutes is nothing. Five minutes is nothing. 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 nothing.